Uh, okay, uh, as you all know that OCaml 5 recently introduces uh, effect handlers. So it's a way of uh, introducing the con um, or manipulating the control flow in your program. And that uses the delimited continuations. And so it makes it as a great choice for the concurrent or async, uh, asynchronous programming uh, for your application. It also provides the added advantage of using the direct style coding instead of the existing monadic style coding. So many of the uh, libraries, uh, new, newer libraries, are implemented using uh, effect handlers. So for example, EIO domain sleep effect is another uh, library. So many more libraries are again coming. So we will just have the quick introduction of EIO and domain sleep. Uh, because we are going to use that in further examples. So uh, if your uh, requirement is responsiveness and low latency, then we will uh, just go for the EIO uh, library because it is very much suitable for the interactive IO operations. And at the other side, uh, if you have the CPU compute, compute intensive workload, uh, then uh, introducing the parallelism is very important. So at that time, we can just use the domain slip library. Uh, and both these library uh, are implemented using effect handlers only. So now that we have multiple libraries, uh, so each of the library has different notion of unit of work. For example, in EIO, unit of work is fiber. In domain sleep, unit of work is task. So uh, whenever we want, uh, whenever there are applications which needs to use the functionality of both the uh, libraries, for example, if you consider the simple application of blockchain, there are different nodes, uh, so each node needs to communicate with other node. And at the same time, it also does the proof of work, which is CPU intensive work. So at that time, uh, right now, there is no proper communication or synchronization between the schedulers as such. Uh, so, that, uh, so we have to uh, address that problem. We have to need some communication between two scheduler tasks. Otherwise, again, uh, we will fall into the same loop uh, uh, as LWT and async are not compatible right now. So we can see this through a simple example. Uh, let's say on the line one, we are just running the eio.run function, which is nothing but it's running the eio scheduler. And uh, we are just forking two fibers. The first fiber is actually computing the Fibonacci of 45, which is we can consider it as a very naive recursive implementation. Uh, and in the second, uh, second fiber, we are just printing some value. So output is first, uh, the computation will happen. Then fiber one will print the answer. And then, after, uh, then fiber two will get printed. But here, we have to uh, notice that fiber one, uh, the computation in the first fiber is going sequentially. So it will block the entire scheduler. Fiber 2 can't execute until the Fiber 1 finishes. So a uh, basic solution uh, we can think of, instead of doing the sequential computation, we can parallelize it because we already have the domain slip library. So yes, we can use it. So let's say I have added on the first line, I have added the domain slip scheduler. And uh, instead of the sequential one, now I have added the parallel version of Fibonacci. So here uh, on the yellow uh, thing, uh, we can see we have created two promises, and at the end, we are awaiting on that promises. So here, again, the output is like first fiber one will get printed, and then the fiber two. Uh, here, you have to notice that even though the computation is going on inside the domain slip scheduler, but we are still uh, blocking the EIO scheduler. So time of computation has gone, uh, has reduced. But we are still not able to go for the next fiber while the computation is going on in different schedule. So uh, what exactly we wanted? What we wanted is first fiber to, uh, to get printed because uh, the, uh, there is a computation going on in other fiber. So at the same time, we want the fiber two gets printed. In this example, it's very uh, simple statement, print test statement. But you can think of the some crucial uh, crucial thing like listening on the socket or reading from the socket. So at that time, it's very important that uh, we are not waiting or we are not blocking the entire scheduler. So our solution is that we will uh, have some unified interface to communicate between two different scheduler tasks. 
So basically, it, that scheduler should provide the abstraction, and each of the schedulers should implement that uh, thing, that abstraction. And it captures the notion of suspending and resuming of task, uh, even though it is not related to any of the scheduler, but it will uh, suspend and resume the task. And uh, it can be used to implement uh, any of the blocking structures like channels and MVAS. For our implementation, we used MVAS for it. And they are scheduler agnostic, so it doesn't matter in which two schedulers you are using. Not only EIO domain slip, but any other two schedulers you can make use of. So here you can see that suspend is the effect. It is taking a function and returning some value. And in first function, uh, uh, we, are, uh, we can see that uh, there is a resumer. So resumer actually captures the continuation uh, of the task which is to be suspended. We will see this thing uh, using some examples so that it will be clear to all. So here, uh, our solution uh, will look like so look something like this, that on two different domains, we are running two different schedulers. And we are using mvar.tech. So basically, it will take some value from the mvar. So on the other side, we are just computing the parallel uh, Fibonacci. And whenever that we get the answer, we will just put the answer into the mvar. So initially, this mvar is empty. So this will get suspend and it will go to the next task. And whenever the answer is available, uh, whenever the answer is available at that time, uh, fiber one will get resumed. So uh, you're getting that, uh, how it is suspended and how it is resumed. So initially we used to block the entire EI scheduler, but using this interface, we will just block that particular fiber. So at the back end, Matlab, we have seen that mvat.take, mvat.put. It actually does not refer to any concrete scheduler as such. So how does it work at the back end? So initially, we have the mvar queue as an empty uh, queue. Uh, we have the scheduler 1's run queue, scheduler 2's run queue. And let's say t1 is executing some take function. So because M nothing is there in mvar to take from, so it will just suspend, it will perform the suspend effect. So at the MVAR side, uh, we can see when there is a suspend, we will perform the suspend effect. So actually, it is nothing, but it will just push the resumer into the MVAR queue. And at the uh, scheduler side, we are actually implementing the effect handler, handler of that uh, suspend effect. So here, as you can see the resumer here, so resumer, when applied with the value V, it will enqueue itself back to the run queue and you have to notice that here only we are capturing the continuation of that particular task. And then we will just apply this F resumer. What is F? This one uh, uh, with suspend, we got F. So that function is we are just pushing the resumer into the MVAR queue. And just go for the next task in the scheduler. So as you can see, now MVAR queue has the uh, resumer of task T1. We we started task T two now, and uh, scheduler two at the other side will just work independently. Uh, now uh, when other another scheduler has some answer or some uh, something to put into the MVAR, uh, it will just pop the resumer from that MVAR queue, and just execute the resumer with the value V. So uh, when we res execute the resumer with value V, it will just enqueue itself in the scheduler one. So as you can see, uh, when we are popping it from MVAR queue, it, becomes em it became empty. And T1 was again enqueued to back to the scheduler once run queue. So these are a few benchmarks on like machine with a four core. So HTTP server is implemented using EIO. And uh, for, uh, for each request that it got, it will just compute the fib of 45. And it will just send a response. So as the uh, from the graph, you can see as the number of domains increased, uh, number of uh, requests that are processed also increased. Even the response time uh, will get increased uh, as the number of uh, domains are increased. And this is uh, the average response time for uh, 32 requests that are being sent. And what do other languages do? For Go and Haskell, it's more like uh, the everything is encoded into the runtime. It is not that much flexible. So they don't have the problem of like 
composability of the different libraries but uh, the cons is that you won't have the specialized uh, scheduler for some specific purpose every time you have to use the same uh, runtime and in rust uh, rust actually uh, has the uh, async and sync functions are not uh, always uh, can be combined freely and even uh, they have the different mm -hmm. runtimes for their async functionalities but they are also not combined freely you can check on their website they have mentioned it and our future scope is like uh, we want to propose this interface to get added into the ecosystem so that any future uh, libraries if they they if they are coming so they should uh, actually uh, use this interface so that uh, it can be combined freely with other libraries as well so uh, we are also uh, working on more benchmarks and we want to test it with the existing libraries as well because there is a large code base already there in async and lwt so it will be beneficial if we could use the uh, our interface to combine the async and lwt as well and additional features you can think of cancellation handling uh, for example, uh, if you have one scheduler, you have suspended the task, it's in MVRQ. Mm -hmm. Now that task is cancelled, so at that time when we are popping it from the MVRQ, we, we, we should not have a task in it. So all this stuff, uh, so we have to handle that case as well as thread safety because we are working on different domains or different threads. So we need that. And all this can be done with very minimal changes in the basic interface. Uh, so that can be there. So this is what is the ongoing of future work. So thank you.